happy Pride to everyone. Um, you know, these uh, it's kind of ironic, I think, or funny in a way. The Spirit works through us because, uh, you know, I, these usually the titles of the talks that I give come to me. You know, I ask for guidance. Sometimes they pop into my mind. Sometimes I'm not sure what to do. But um, it's kind of fitting that the title of my talk today is Let the Good Times Roll, inspired by the car song, mm -hmm. um, not the B.B. King version, but by the car song, and the Momentum of Miracles. And uh, for those of you not in San Francisco, just outside our doors, literally probably about uh, a couple hundred yards away, over a million people are meeting to celebrate Pride, um, which is a celebration of the LGBTQ community and all others who embrace that um, and it really is a, a, an opportunity for us to celebrate um, the, how far the, the human species has come. Um, because if you think about it, the LGBT celebration of LGBT pride is really an expression of right-mindedness in, in, from the course's point of view. Because remember, for so long, that aspect of human, humanity had been repressed by fear. It was, you know, homophobia, and transphobia, and gender, you know, all the kinds of different roles that folks assigned to gender based on fear um, were egoic, right? They were meant to separate. So it's been 50 years since the Stonewall Inn triggered this movement. And in fact, what we are experiencing is um, the expression of love in its, in its imperfect way. So it's really great to have this. Um, the Course of Miracles says the same decisions are continuous and that we're always choosing between the ego and the Holy Spirit. So if you think about that, just today when you got up and you had to start making decisions about your day, you were in fact, you know, working with spirit or working with the ego. Now we all know that the ego is ingenious. The ego has made it, has created this grand scheme, right? Um, in the Course of Miracles, it says, "Behold the grand projection." Okay, so we have this world that we've created, these bodies that we've created. Just this morning on the news, you saw President Trump. Maybe you, I don't know if you read this or not, but meeting with um, the leader of North Korea, and you know all these things going on that are truly in some ways meant to distract us from our inner life. And the ego has created this holy trinity of sin, guilt, and fear. And what that means is, is that essentially it creates thoughts and images that keep us in the past, which is our belief in sin, guilt, which keeps us, which when we experience guilt is usually in the present, and fear, which is usually about our thoughts about the future. So the ego really has the scheme that it has created. So our question is, given that we're in this thought system that's really complicated and challenging, how is it that we escape from this thought system? Or how, what do we do with it all? In today's reading that um, Reverend Tony read, it says this, your mission is very simple. You are asked to live so as to demonstrate that you are not an ego, and I do not choose channels wrong. So for the first thing what the Course of Miracles is telling us is it's shoring us up. Faith, it's essentially an expression of faith, isn't it? If you are here, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is telling you that I have confidence in you, or spirit has confidence in you. Don't believe the ego. The ego wants to kind of undermine. It's like termites, right? It wants to undermine our foundation. It wants us to tell us fearful things. But the truth of the matter is, is that if you're here, if you're practicing the Course in Miracles, if you're practicing a spirituality that is undoing the ego, then you are listening to spirit. So how do we accomplish our, miss, our mission? We perform miracles. We ask again. We choose again. 
Course of Miracles says this, no one who learns from experience that one choice brings peace and joy while another brings chaos and disaster needs additional convincing. Okay? So we've all had these experiences where we've had really hard times, where we made choices that have brought us pain. And then we've also had the experiences where we choose Holy Spirit and we've had peace. So I have a recent example. Recently, I was at home on a let the good times roll. I was really having a good time at home. In a sense, I was working. I was doing some work and I was in the flow. Okay, you ever know, have that experience when you're working, whatever it is you may be doing, and you're really, um, you're really getting it done. Okay, things are happening, whatever kind of work you do. In this case, this was kind of for me intellectual work that I was doing. And I got a text from a friend who wanted to stop by and um, hang out for a little while. I was in the neighborhood. And I thought, okay, sure, you know, come on, friend can come over. Now, the backstory to this is that I had initially met this friend um, at, on a date. And, the, the, you know, we didn't work out as, a, you know, as, as kind of that kind of relationship, right? Um, but we became friends. But the truth of the matter is that I still had special relationship fantasies toward mm -hmm. this person, right? What I call my special relationship fantasies. And I know when, you, when, it, when I say fantasies, everybody thinks of sex, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, not exactly just that, but you know, the idea of having more, that person being more um, involved in my, in, you know, with my life and all that stuff, okay? So, anyway, my friend comes over. He kind of stays longer than I had expected him to come. I kind of get, I get what is called, in my mind, I call it an ego attack. Okay, because I have these, you know, kind of feelings are triggered, and I want more from the relationship. And of course, I'm not sharing any of this because we already had that conversation about what our relationship was going to be like. But it doesn't mean that, you know, that my specialness toward him had been had been kind of um, limited, right? It was still going on. So eventually, um, he does leave, and um, I'm there to deal with my egoic fallout. Okay. So now my workflow has been interrupted, so I can't do any more work. My mind starts obsessing. Um, it's time for me to go to bed. I have to go to bed. So I go to bed, and I you know, have this restless sleep. I wake up in the morning, and you know, first thing is I wake up and I'm feeling guilty you know, because I didn't get you know, my work done that I wanted to get done. I'm frustrated because I have, still have this special relationship going on, and and I'm thinking to myself, oh, you know, this is <coughs> obsessing a little bit, and I get depressed, you know, and you know what the Course in Miracles says about depression, don't you? Mm. Yes. You get depressed when you don't get what you want. Ooh. Okay, that's what it says about depression. So, okay, so here I am. So what do I do with it? All right, today's reading, all right, again, I'm going to quote this one. You learn through reward. You learning is that through rewards is more effective than learning through pain. So I'm like, okay. And now literally I'm in bed. I'm like, all right, Holy Spirit, I need help. Okay, so here's my guidance. Get out of bed. Get your coffee, shower, dress. Go through your morning routine, right? So in my morning routine includes, I have a couple of meditation books I read, I read the healing team prayer, all right, and I do, and then sometimes I also do like a read a paragraph from the text of A Course in Miracles, and then, and then I pray, right, and then I go into my prayer and meditation, and, um, and this time I use this three, you know, sometimes I use this three-step prayer that I learned um, from one of Gary Bernard's books. And it was it's just basically, so I'm like, okay, Jesus, help me to stop thinking with my ego about this situation with my friend. Um, help me to stop making the situation real. Okay, so again, it's bringing it back to the metaphysics of the Course, right? It's not real, okay? Um, doesn't mean I deny the feelings or the thoughts or anything like that, but stop making it real and turn it over to the Holy Spirit. 
So I did this. I got out of my, um, as soon as I got out of my meditation, and I had a miracle. Okay? Here was the miracle. I was inspired to get back to work. I got my work done really quickly. And um, I was actually then able to go on and, you know, do other things that I hadn't planned to do. Of Course in Miracles says this. My chosen channels cannot fail because I will lend them my strength as long as theirs is wanting. So in my particular situation, right, at that moment when I was in bed, right, I sensed wrongly that my strength was wanting. But spirit strength was there to lend it to me. Of course, what I had to do was follow spirit's guidance. So from the song that um, inspired this talk, Let the Good Times Roll, there is a line in it. Now I swear to you, I didn't know this line was in this song. Okay? But it is in there. The line goes like this. If the illusion is real, let them, meaning illusions, give you a ride. So, if the illusion is real, let them give you a ride. Okay, so... Now, what's interesting about this, this line is, first of all, the illusion's in it, but I did a little research on the song itself, and the band member from the cars that, that made the song, it was kind of a parody about the music business. And what he was really talking about was how hard it was to be, a, be in the rock and roll music business. And he was kind of tweaking it a little bit. Um, so it was kind of funny about that, but what I took from this line if the illusion is real, let them give you a ride, is that what we're really meant to do is, yeah, we have our illusions, right? But, in, but why not take the Holy Spirit's point of view? Let them give you a ride. What, is, what do we think about when we hear the word ride? Uh, you know, I think about jumping in the car, going out, having a good time, you know, California, you know, the window's down, enjoy the weather. Think of rides, you know, going to the amusement park. Let it give you a ride. Like, enjoy the ride. Enjoy the illusion. All right? That's what we have the opportunity to do. We know that we're here to undo the ego. And at the same time, we're also, from the Course of Miracles point of view, we're here to have a good time. Right? Because we know, underneath it all, what is the truth. Right? We know underneath it all is the truth. So we should be enjoying ourselves. We should try to enjoy ourselves as much as we, um, as much as we possibly can. Right? That's our purpose. Let the illusion be real and enjoy the ride. Okay. So I was thinking about this, and um, some of you know um, it was about actually it was about a year ago at this time that I took a new job. I gave up my old job, which was a you know I had a title, I ran a big department. And I went to this other school, which I um, now work at. It's called Macaulay's Institute. And um, it's, it's for you know, teenagers and young people who have mental health problems, significant enough that they need clinical treatment. Um, they don't live there, but they come there during the day and get that. And I'm one of the teachers there. And so one of the things I realized is that, is that how much of a good time I have working there, OK? And, and I'm thinking, wow, this is, a, this is an example of a huge shift, isn't it? The other job I used to bitch and moan about all the time, you know? <laughs> and so we have this meeting from 8.30 to 9 in the morning where we come in and the staff, before the students get there, we check in. And, um, you know, we, we, end up, we talk about some of the situations that are going on. And um, we laugh a lot. You know, we just laugh a lot. We, you know, just because you know, some situations are absurd, I crack a lot of jokes, okay, so it, it's really kind of, it's really kind of interesting for me to have this kind of different experience about, you know, working in this, you know, kind of new environment that I'm now working, um, is that I really, I really enjoy it. And then I go into the classroom and, um, you know, just have a lot of fun, you know, whatever course I'm teaching, um, you know, we just kind of go about kind of go about it and um, in, enjoy ourselves. So 
what I've noticed is that my relationships with the students have improved since I first got there. When you first, when you become a teacher and you first teach, they, one of the things they say is for the first six months, don't smile, okay? <laughs> because, the teach, because the students are always, um, they're checking you out, you know, they're testing your limits and so on and so forth. Now, that's not true. Right. It didn't take me six months to smile. But, you know, for the first semester, you know, I, I, was, I had to be, you know, I was pretty stern. I was not stern, but I was firm. Let's, let's say that word. I was very firm. So now they know me. I know them. And, you know, it's, it's kind of a really good, cool experience. Um, and it's really interesting because I really bring the Course of Miracles into it. Like, I don't see the students as being, you know, like, ha I mean, they are, they're identified with a mental, emotional disability, it's called. Um, but I don't see them like that. I certainly give them supports, the way we're supposed to support students in whatever needs that they have. Um, but I see them as totally capable and totally able to meet the standards that middle school students or high school students have to meet. And that comes from the Course of Miracles, right? Because I see them as being innocent, but I also see them as being whole and capable. And so, um, you know, that's just kind of, that's kind of the way that I, um, I look at the whole thing. And so, um, from what I can see, um, the way I kind of experience this is that let the good times roll and the momentum of miracles is important because the more that we do our miracles, the more we get in the habit of expecting miracles. And the more that we're going to continue to want to do them. Because the Course of Miracles tells us that it's basically essentially retraining us, right? What are the rewards? If you have to choose between pain and misery, mm -hmm. chaos, mm -hmm. And peace and joy and love, what are you going to choose? Well, the more experience that we have with the miracle, the more experience we have with love and peace and joy and laughter, mm -hmm. then the more we're going to choose that. The more we're going to realize that that is possible. A Course in Miracles says decisions are continuous. We always have the choice to gladden ourselves. We always have the choice to make ourselves happy. And so we understand that, that that's the choice. And so I leave you with this. Today, let the good times roll. Mm -hmm. Accept the momentum of miracles. Happy Pride. That's my talk.